Hello, welcome. Take a moment and try this problem out. Press play when you're ready to solve it with me. Okay, so we're going to be sketching out cosine function here. And we'll solve it in two ways. First, we'll solve it intuitively. And then what we'll do is we'll solve it using um, a functional thinking and a calculator. And, they, and the two approaches do support each other. But I want you to get uh, a sample of how that th these both approaches might work. So first of all, let me just pull up. This is, let me reduce that. Uh, this right here, oops, it's just from Desmos, it's a quick graph of the cosine function. So let me scale this way down so you can see it. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is our cosine function. It's our parent function. I'm going to label it as such. So this is where y equals the cosine of x. And so even before I think of this problem, I'm thinking about the cosine function. I'm thinking, all right, if it starts at the um, y-axis, uh, it's a kind of a peak. Let's so go along, dip down, cross our axis. Here's the bottom right here at pi radians, and then come back up at two pi radians. That's our normal period uh, from one peak to the other. So here the period is two pi. Well, then I just think to myself, okay, whatever's going to happen here, we've got to start and end at the same height. We've got our lowest point that's halfway between the beginning and end of a period. So halfway between 0 and 2 pi is pi. And then halfway between pi and 2 pi is 3 pi over 2. And between 0 and pi is pi over 2, or half of pi. Those halfway points are where the, the parent function crosses the x-axis, which is the midline of that function, the middle of it, essentially. Right? The amplitude then would be how far above the highest point would be and how far below the midline, how far above the midline and below the midline the highest and lowest points are. So in this function, we're told the amplitude is 3. OK, so it's going to stretch 3 above and below the midline. They tell us the midline is at y equals negative 1. OK, so I can graph that really quick. Here's y equals negative 1. OK, and we're going to go 3 above here and 3 below, 1, 2, 3, and negative 4. Here, those would be the peaks and valleys of the cosine function. And we know it passes the point 0, 2. So we have to include a cycle that passes this point. All right, and uh, the amplitude is three. Okay, so we have one, two, three above and below, and the period's pi over two. So I'm thinking of this one, two, three, four, five key points in our parent function. We know I have one of them here, so we have two, three, four, five key points to graph. I'm including zero as one of them, and I know that this point is going to exist, which matches this point here. It's the, it starts and ends at the same height. So that cycle is pi over 2. So this input is pi over 2, and the height is 2 there. That's one of our periods. Now, what else do we know? Well, halfway between 0 and pi over 2 is pi over 4. And at pi over 4, the cosine function will hit its lowest point here. So this dash represents pi over 4. Halfway, it's a fourth, essentially, of pi, which is half of a half. And the output's negative 4. Well, then we know the halfway points between them will hit the midline, right here and here. And we get this cosine wave. It, and it looks pretty terrible. So I could have I spread that out maybe with every other space. It would look a lot nicer. But I think you get the idea. But this point right here, let me label that in red now. This point is at. Um, well, if this is a fourth, that means half of that, this is an eighth right here. Two eighths, this is three eighths of pi, or three pi over eight. And the output's negative one. And then at this point as well, this is one eighth of pi, or pi over eight, negative one. I knew it was pi over eight because that's half of a fourth. Now, if you want to get a better graph than this, I would just space these four ticks out every other and it will look a little bit nicer. And I'd be happy to sketch that for you, but I, I just want to get on with the video and show you another approach. So this looks a little bit scrunched, but you would get credit for it. Um, now, in general, if you want to take a different approach, you could say that any cosine wave is written as y equals a times the cosine of bx plus c plus d. And I'm using arbitrary variables here, but the idea is that this number is going to be the amplitude. This is your amplitude. It's your vertical stretching of the cosine function, or any function for that matter. 
This number is your midline, which is your vertical translation for any function, up or down. And so we can find the period and frequency by looking at b. It turns out that uh, b equals 2 pi um, over the period of your function. And if you want to find the frequency, it's just the reciprocal of that. And then this would be if there's a horizontal shift in place, and that's a horizontal shift. So I'll, I'll write like this. Um, it's it's plus c, so it's going to shift it left c over b units. It's always c over b. It's, it has to include that um, divided by the coefficient of x. That has to do with I'll just write horizontal shift by c over b units. So if it's plus, let's say you had cosine of, let's say, 5x plus 6, it would shift to the left by 6 over 5 units, or, or uh, 1 and a fifth to the left. So it's going to shift by c over b. It shifts left or right depending if c is positive or negative. Um, so here I would say it's going to go left, but I, I'm, trying, I'm having a hard time thinking right now how to say that generally. Sorry about that. But it's a horizontal shifting by c over b units. It's going to go to the left if, it's po if c over b is positive and to the right if c over b is negative. Why do I tell you that? Because with the information they gave you, you could just say, well, the equations y equals our amplitude is 3, cosine of, well, we're told the period is pi over 2, so you, you can find b by saying it's 2 pi. Let's find b right here. b equals 2 pi divided by the period, which is pi over 2. Keep change flip, right? 2 pi times uh, 2 over pi, um, which is just 4. Right? You flip that second fraction, which is 2 over pi, and multiply. So you get 2 pi times 2, which is 4, and then the pi's cancel out. So you get cosine of 4. There's no horizontal shifting, so there's no c value x. And then minus 1, because the horizontal uh, the midline is negative 1, which is a vertical shifting uh, down by 1. Once you have that information, you can use the calculator to figure out what's going on here. Um, so in the calculator, you go to y equals, enter your equation, clear up any old ones there. I'm going to type in 3 cosine of 4x, close parentheses, minus 1. Then make sure in mode that you're in radians, because we're working in radians here. And then I go to zoom, and I go to choice 7, which is trig. And I see what I get. All right, I get this, this right here. And um, I suppose, I mean, it, it depends if you, they want exact values or not. I think you can get away with approximations here. But let me just say that we can confirm that our calculations are correct by clicking second trace. And then under value, if you enter in pi over 2, hit enter you get the output of 2, and there's what pi over 2 looks like uh, as an approximation of the decimal. So you're getting this point right here. And you can confirm all the points that way. Let's just do one more. If you plug in pi over 8, we should get negative 1. So second, pi divided by 8, and the output is negative 1. There it is. So the, the thing about the calculator is um, here, it's a little difficult uh, to look at increments in terms of radians. Any tricks that you know, please share, and I'll pass them on. Uh, I guess you could go to second graph, which gives you a table, and hit the plus button to pick an increment that is, in our case, pi over 8. And here, what you know you're looking at is increments of pi over 8, but it looks like I didn't start at 0. So let me just go to that table set. Start at 0. And that's our increments of pi over 8. So now if we go to our table, we should see these same outputs, right? There they are. I mean, these decimals don't look so friendly, but really what we're approximating are going up by eighths. At one eighth, the output is negative one, which is what we have right here. At two eighths, two eighths, excuse me, which is a fourth, uh, pi over four, which is this number right here about, the output's negative four. Three eighths, which is about this decimal right here, the output's negative one, and then uh, four eighths, which is pi over two, the output is two, and so on and so forth. So you could analyze it that way. All right, anyway, hope this helped graphing a cosine function.